About 10 years ago, the biggest pop star in the world was Britney Spears. And I picked up pretty quickly on the fact that the whole Britney phenomenon had very, very little to do with music, even compared to most other pop stars. But all the same, I always thought it'd be cool if it turned out that she was actually really musically talented. Maybe she'd turn into a great songwriter. Maybe she could play a killer bass guitar solo. That, obviously, never happened. But eventually, we did get a Britney-level pop star who actually was willing and able to prove that she had tons of musical talent. Her name was Gaga. I have mixed feelings about this. Quite frankly, I'm kind of sick of talking about her. The way she's come to dominate the conversation of current pop music in such a short amount of time is a little disturbing, quite honestly. I myself have already done a very detailed and thoughtful analysis of her last single, Bad Romance. And I also named Just Dance my favorite pop song of 2009, Pray For My Soul. But still, I've never really bought into her completely. Part of me resents the idea that she's the pop star that it's safe to like. And I don't mean safe in that she's less likely to devour you that way. I mean that I resent the way that a veneer of postmodernism has given her cover for musical credibility when she's really not doing anything all that different from Gwen Stefani or Fergie. She undeniably puts more effort into her image than her music. Now I have taken a listen to her latest album, and after listening to it, I do take her seriously as an artist, as a songwriter, but there's still always been something that's kept me from fully appreciating her. Just something... Something... Something I can't put my finger on... Yeah. Now, because of her vast and wide-reaching influence, she immediately made waves with her latest release, so now I pretty much have no choice but to take a look at Telephone, an okay song, and a career-worst video for Ms. Gaga. Truly, not since late period Michael Jackson have we seen such an epic spectacle of bloated catastrophe. Let's begin. We begin the video with Gaga being thrown in prison, presumably for killing her boyfriend at the end of Paparazzi, or possibly for spontaneously combusting that guy in Bad Romance, or maybe for writing the line, got my ass squeezed by sexy Cupid in Love Game. It's complicated and stupid, got my ass squeezed by sexy Cupid. Yeesh. Now, because Gaga is gonna take her sweet time, we've got about three full minutes of meaningless setup to get through before we get to any actual music. So in the meantime, Gaga will spend this video, oh let's see, getting thrown in a women's prison, uh, being stripped naked, making out with another woman, and boy, oh boy, oh boy, I can't tell you how not turned on I am by any of this. Truly, Lady Gaga has mastered the art of being sexual without being even remotely sexy, a skill that Madonna didn't develop till the 90s for the record. And it is this bizarre mix of sexy and unsexy which has led to the tedious, unfunny, and completely justified rumors that she's somehow secretly a man. Fortunately, Gaga deals with these ugly insinuations with her trademark subtlety and tact. I told you she didn't have a dick. If that's true, why does it feel like she just tried to teabag me? I don't know what to make of her refusal to be conventionally attractive. Is it some kind of feminist statement? Post-feminist statement? Post-statement statement? I don't know. All I know is that I am totally not interested and I'm starting to get impatient. Hello, hello, baby, you Jeez, finally. At this point, we're gonna have to talk about the song and the video as separate entities, because that's exactly what they are. The video has demonstrably nothing to do with the song, and that's not surprising, considering that would be very, very difficult to get the kind of epicness you expect from a Lady Gaga video out of the song's actual subject matter. Hello, hello, baby, you called, I can't hear a thing. I have got no service in the club, you say, say. Right. The actual lyrical content concerns Gaga trying to dance at a club, but she keeps getting interrupted by a guy who keeps calling her. And I'll tell you right now, this is a flimsy, flimsy premise for a song. Oh no! This guy keeps calling me! Oh, what can I do about this world-ending calamity of an issue? Oh, it's so awful. It's just so terrible. Turn the phone off! It's that easy. 
I mean, the song is not that bad. I don't have anything against it, but every time I listen to it, I keep feeling like I'm listening to something along the lines of Got an itchy leg, got an itchy leg, oh what an itch on my leg, 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 it's an itchy, itchy, itch on my leg, 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 what can I do about this itch on my leg, it's an itch on my leg, scratch your leg, you idiot! Stop singing, scratch your leg. But I'm not gonna sit here and pretend I don't know why this song is what it is. In fact, it gets a lot clearer once you realize that in the past year, we've had a love song about phones, a sex song about phones, and now a club song about phones. Why the sudden increase in phone-related songs? I'll tell you why. Ringtone. Ringtones. This song is entirely a mercenary exercise in selling ringtones, aka the only way the music industry makes any money anymore. So I guess that puts all that artsy pretension into perspective now, doesn't it? Then put the drink down. Is this really this difficult? I mean, I don't go to a lot of nightclubs, but I assume they have, you know, a table, or a bar, or something. Is this really, really worth writing a song about? Right. Now, as a dedicated popologist, I have made the following scientific observation. Lady Gaga does not like using words, and will avoid them whenever possible. Soon, she will communicate only in her own made-up alien space language, and we will be the stupid ones for not understanding it. I feel like there was something else I didn't like about this song. Something... Something... Oh, right. They only gave Beyonce a four-line guest verse in Telephone, but that's all she needs to take whatever momentum this song had and slam it into a brick wall. The beat turns into a big galumphing elephant, and Beyonce does her best to beat the living crud out of the song until it's unrecognizable. You know what? At least Lady Gaga is polite to her gentleman caller. Beyonce clearly wants to destroy this man for the unforgivable crime of calling her while she's dancing. A disaster indeed. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier. A disaster? Really? Calm down. This is a disaster. That is not. And... I don't know if this is nitpicking or what, but it actually really does legitimately bug the crap out of me that she rhymes faster with faster and then with faster. That's just weak songwriting. You wrote a bad song, PT. All right, stepping back a bit into the plot of the video. Well, plot is probably not the right word, but stepping back into the video, Beyonce springs Gaga out on bail. You've been a very bad girl. A very, very bad, bad girl, Gaga. You've been a very bad actress, Beyonce. Okay, it's at this point that the whole thing reveals itself as a giant Tarantino ripoff, up to and including stealing the pussy wagon from Kill Bill, which is not cool. If there is one thing that Tarantino does not stand for, it is taking ideas from other filmmakers. Anyway, let's see, Beyonce feeds Gaga a honey bun. And, you know, I feel like there's some kind of symbolism involved here. Uh, maybe it implies that the two of them are... Yeah, I, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm sorry. Moving on. You sure you want to do this, honeybee? What do you mean, am I sure? You know what they say. Once you kill a cow, you gotta make a burger. You know, Gaga, trust is like a mirror. You can fix it if it's broke. But you can still see the crack in that motherfucker's reflection. This is radio. It's like the old saying goes. It goes, what in God's name did any of that just mean? Anyway, they get to their destination where they're about to get about their business, which is yet more murder. I think at this point, Lady Gaga has racked up a higher kill count than Eminem, Nine Inch Nails, and Marilyn Manson combined. Right. 
I hope you paid attention to that single line of inaudible dialogue, because that's about as much insight as we're going to get into why Beyonce is going to kill this guy. I guess we're just meant to assume that he's yet another one of the no-account, lying, cheating, stealing, uncommitted jerks that Beyonce seems to date exclusively in her music. Oh, by the way, I cannot believe it's taken this long for Beyonce to kill a guy. And while mild profanity is not much of a justification for actual murder, it's more than we get for why Lady Gaga does what she does, which is sneak into the kitchen and poison all the food so that everyone dies. Okay. Sometimes I feel like I live in Grand Central Station. I'm not taking no calls cause I'll be dead too. Not taking no calls? Wow! What amazing problem solving skills. Only took you three minutes of overdramatic singing and uh, about 37 minutes of music video to figure that one out. So I guess they don't have to be worried about whatever annoying thing that the caller was calling about, although come to think of it, she says right at the beginning that she can't even hear him, so whatever message that guy had is gonna stay a complete mystery, I suppose. Hello, hello, baby, you called, I can't hear a thing. I said that I need to know where you keep her medication! She's having spasms, she passed out, and I, I cannot find her meds. You have to tell me where you keep them, I can't find them. We're in the hospital. The doctors say they need you here. They need your consent before they operate, and they need to operate right now, so you need to come here. Right now, you need to come here. You here right now otherwise they're gonna have to cut off her arms and her legs so they need they need you here we need you hello Can you hear me hello hello okay back to the video oh right I forgot to mention this thing is redolent with product placement I'm being serious, this video has more obtrusive advertisements than that guy with the glasses.com. Among this film's sponsors are Virgin Mobile, Plenty of Fish, and most bafflingly, Miracle Whip, because a murder just isn't a murder without the tangy zest of Miracle Whip. Yeah, I'm not sure why Lady Gaga thought she would have good brand synergy with Miracle Whip. Maybe she thought they sold actual whips. All I know is that if they hadn't gotten involved, I seriously doubt we would have had this stupid ass let's make a sandwich scene. Dear God, this video sucks. <coughs> and so, everyone dies. This slaughter is brought to you by Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread helps kill strong bodies 12 ways. Now, begin the murder dance! Oh, hello there, Hedwig. How's that angry inch going for you? And finally, the two finish off their roaring rampage of ridiculousness and ride off into the sunset. We did it, honey bee. You sure did. I don't know what you did or why you did it, but you did it. Now let's go far, far away from here. You promise we'll never come back? Yes, promise. Please. I promise. Usually, it's not fair to ask that a music video gives you a coherent storyline, but when it's this long, contains this much dialogue, and this little music, you stop being able to access the part of your brain that allows you to just appreciate a music video as a series of random images. Lady Gaga's always been preposterous, but this was over the line for me. This video was terrible. And it unintentionally spotlights the pointlessness of the song's subject matter. I seriously hope Lady Gaga doesn't inspire any other artists to make any weird, ugly videos with subpar music in them. We're in a lot of trouble, people. Something you can't 